Everyone, my name is the Shirt Killer, and welcome to SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Part 4. And I'm just preparing real quick. I'm going to have a little interruption in about 13 minutes. Just got some food cooking, but besides that, let's go continue on with our adventure. Last episode, we went into the Mermware and down uh, rock bottom. Why did I try to say downtown? But yeah. The guy out of these two menacing levels. And we actually did well this time. Whoop de do. But it took like nearly two hours just to at least do this. So yeah, not fun. But it's still fun to play this game, but it's not fun when you have to sit longer than you should have. And plus I kinda got annoyed last episode near the end. So let's go to of course Sun the Mountain. Last episode we actually unlocked Sand Mountain before we ended it off. But I'm gonna go unlock the not the side of the industrial part. So now we have at least at least a bit of a time save once we come back and go to the industrial park. But let's go to Sand Mountain. And this is kind of an interesting level. Sand Mountain, where sea creatures go to enjoy an afternoon of falling down. Squidward, am I glad you're here. I need to borrow your toothbrush again. What? You do this before? Oh, yeah, lots of times. I figured if you didn't know, you wouldn't mind. Oh, I'm back anyway. I'm trying to exercise to run ads from all this robot mess. And now everything is ruined. Does the toothbrush? Oh, it's those blasted robots! They've taken over the sea slums. How can I see with those ugly things beating everyone up? Listen, SpongeBob, you've got to help me. I'm going to lose my marbles if I don't get some relaxation. SpongeBob, if you keep your marbles in a bag, they don't get lost as often. In fact, I've got mine right here. <laughs> Fun of marbles. Okay, okay, I'll give you one for each slope you clear. Now that's a deal. Good. So yeah, welcome to Sand Mountain. And already we see some bombshells. Wow. Get rid of those robots on the slopes, you barnacle and you'll find a golden spatula reward. Lucky what this there. But all right, welcome to Sand Mountain. This first area doesn't even. right here, where I'm facing that rock, there's actually a way to get to the death barrier for some reason, and the game will just immediately just show you through I don't know why, like, it just automatically responds to you, because you're like, inside it. Yeah, you can actually get, like, for some reason the death barrier spawns you inside a block, um, it, it actually inside here, and if you jump at like the right spot, um, as Sandy, because yeah, like it takes a bit for the death barrier to happen, but when it does, um, it actually does take a bit of time. I did, I done it with, with SpongeBob a couple years ago as well. But for some reason the glitch doesn't happen. Like I got it like 
possibly, it could be like even closer than I think. Like, I know like which spot it is. Like, I know this is the area where the death bird is supposed to be placed, but now, let's see what we get in luck. But, but, let's go kill that flying guy just for the simple extra toss. Hello, talk. my most favorite friend in the whole world. I found another golden spatula for you. Sure, if you fall down to the bottom of this pit. Isn't there a safer way? It's always safety with you people. Hmm, I suppose you could bungee down. And it's 2,500 sunny on this. Like, wow. But hey, free spatula, can't miss that. Like, it's one of the most easiest spatulas to get in the game. Apart from another spatula, it's actually twice as much easy. And it doesn't take you as long to get up here. Just to get in. So, yeah, you can actually go this way to get up to this area. But it's the mini shortcut. And there's another spatula here, but how do I do that? Well, it's called switching characters. Guess what we got Sandy this time. And actually, Sandy's more helpful in this level than anywhere else in terms of using a nice little exploit in the game where you can just do a triple jump on the slide and she can actually um, stop the slide from making her move. And it's like so simple too. Like, all you gotta do is hit A three times. Like, that's all you need is three. Like, three hits on the A button, and that is it. Don't need anything else. Also, look at this hidden sock down there. Surprisingly enough, I didn't have trouble finding that sock when I first played the game. Oh. Hi, Gary. Yeah, but I think... Yeah, Sandy works way well, because it delays time as well. Because with Sandy, since she takes a little bit to climb up, then it does take a bit of an extension time just to even, like, climb up. So if you actually get in the right spot with that little death barrier, which is almost right here, um, then, nice job, you just completed a death barrier trick by someone who actually can't find a stupid spot for it. How I can climb on this? Um, I think I know a little trick to get up to the top without having to do the whole thing. That is jumping off of that ledge there and just doing that. Like, simple. It's a simple spectacle, but it's unnecessary for, um, game designers. Um, to leave stuff where you can just simply exploit it and have no trouble at all completing Also, this is a cool time to check out the level. Because we're still wondering, um, one character that's supposed to be in this level. I know a character, um, well, actually, I'll just say right now. Patrick is actually in this level, even though he's not playable. For this level, he is actually somewhere around here. But for some reason, the only cutting you see him is him in the middle of like a mountain top, but you can't really tell where he's really at. And that's one thing that's bothering my mind is where is Patrick officially? But let's first unlock all these doors, and then we'll start. So we're gonna go with SpongeBob because even though 
then it would be more useful. Um, all the challenges actually require SpongeBob to be activated. So it's the easiest one, which is Guppy Mound. It, it's a very short slide. Not long. It's it's at least short. Um. Yeah. Already, you can see like there's a giant button. Like basically, this entire level is just sliding mostly. Down this hill a hundred times. It's usually rolling. Darn kids think it's funny to push me, but if you can beat my time down the hill, I'll give you a golden spatula. So apparently, your time is a minute twenty-one. But how can you get a minute twenty-one down this slope if? You are rolling, like straight up rolling on your side. That shouldn't happen. Also, here's an awesome trick. One more shiny. If the person wasn't in the bloody way, I was about to say you could have gotten like a secret ultra bright monster combo from here, but since this idiot that came had to be in the way, it just ruined it. Get ready for some destruction. Well, I even touched the sand. Okay. Also, that robot right there, when he throws um his missile at such an awkward angle, he's actually trying to hit you, but his little hit detection thing doesn't work so well. Also, I knew I was going to be finished by hitting that, but for some reason, I just hit the very edge. But now that means I'm gonna have to restart um the slide. But we'll just take a quick run through before we continue. Because you know, I like to make a quick run through of the area before I actually start. I didn't like the butter. No, welcome to the office. We're getting ready. We're getting ready. I'm gonna wait for the phone. No one will say it's right. Right. Yeah. I gave you all these quick enough if you didn't listen to me. Okay. For some reason, I'm just looking through the freaking walls. Ugh. Brilliant. Just wonderful. Oh. Okay. Yeah, the slight mechanic in this game, it's kind of awkward at certain moments. Like what you saw when I failed there. Yeah, that that's the game saying I don't know what I'm gonna do for this jump, so I'm just gonna make it such a wide overpass. Also, look at this sock right here. Like, this is such a simple sock. Oh, I'm trying to see if I can... Like, you can just barely hit him. Oh wait, that worked. There we go. I actually destroyed the machine. Oh, are you inside, buddy? Thank you. Alright. Yeah, that's another rare and extremely odd glitch. Well, slide. Oh, I didn't get the other button. This brilliant. And apparently the boulder got tossed. Well, that's just brilliant. Time to beat some of these levels are kind of horrendous. 
Because you don't know how many hours it sometimes took me just to even beat this entire level itself. Just by doing the time challenges. So basically what you can do is you can just spam the A button just to get ahead. Oh, so you see that swing there? That little swinger there? That gets that 50 right there, and I need that back. So let's go beat this um, slide challenge. Bit wanting. If you're going like at a good rate. Oh my god. Why am I nearly screwing up now? I shouldn't be. Okay, let's get more to make a combo. Kinda of where I see that. And that was the long double jump right there. Just from the slide. And as soon as you go inside the box, there you go. Get our spatula. But let's go get some of the things from this one slide. Because, you know, nothing's good without getting at least everything, right? I basically just play this game just to get every single thing. Like, I'm literally 100%ing the 100%. Oh, if you think that was something different than what you could have thought, no, I'm actually dead serious. I actually want... Also, you have to do like a good delay double jump right there just to get that 50. It, it's not easy if you don't do it at the right moment. I'm actually about to die because like I already can tell I can already tell. I'm going to do this. What you can do too is you can do this and go back. So basically, this is like a perfect exploit if you miss something really good and you want to come back at Sandy. Then there you go. Just do the triple jump. So, we have completed this slide. So, up to the next. Alright, so we're going to switch back to Spongebob, and then we're going to go to the second mountain. I don't actually remember the mountain names. Like, I know there's Gubby Mountain, of course there's that, but I don't know the other two. Okay, let's try the Super Ultra Mega Monster combo thing again. There we go. Alright, back to the ski lodge. Alright, let's run over here. Next mountain is a flounder hammer. Alright. I know, I see him looks right. Ooh. Way bigger than before. I fly like the wind and float like a sea bee. If you can beat my time down the hill, I'll give you a golden spatula. Alright. Uh, there's something different with this slide. Now, the main thing that's different about this slide is that you got snowmen. There's for eight of those. And you get a sock. Yes, you have to kill all eight of the snowmen in one life for a sock.
Personally, I think that's just dumb. Also, you can take this shortcut right here. But also, that's majorly horrendous. Because, like, how can you expect living, like, the entire slide over and over again just to get all of the snowman dead? Or destroyed, at least. So we're gonna take the path to the right, and there's actually a snowman, um, one, like, the split path. At the beginning, there's three, and of course the one that was behind the start line. So we have two in these two slides. So let's see. Three, two, two, that's seven. No, four to two. Yeah, so that's all eight. Now, that can't be right. Yeah, that can't be right. I know there's at least two more that are up ahead from here. But I don't remember having, or actually no, more up ahead. I don't, like, okay. I, I need to remember this game a bit more. Like, I know, like, everything, but not really as much as you expect. But I'm still capable of 100%ing this game no matter what. Since I've known, I've known how to beat in this game. And, of course, I am getting all the shiny objects. Because, like, just judging from how I was doing, um, on the other side, I was going for everything. I I'm a big collector. Oh! Just two seconds away from messing up. Of course that would hit me somehow. Wow, he almost got me. Alright, this time I can at least judge the area. I almost got hit. Oh, there was another spawner underground. Okay, I'm apparently bullying their faces. Alright. But yeah, this is totally gonna be 100%. Like, seriously, there's one sock just for destroying all the snowmen. That is just bad enough from itself to hear that. So let's continue on. So we get another spatula. Congratulations, SpongeBob! Oh. Uh, I was just trying to get something. I was about to bite my Ellie's piece of art. Alright. Now, since I completed this slide, I'm going to use Sandy for now. Now, this is where Sandy is super handy. Because guess what? That glitch, or that little exploit you can do with the little Sandy trick. Yeah, you can still use that. Oh, so the first footpath has nothing. But the next two does. Oh, actually, this has a snowman. So we know that the other slide has a snowman. And of course, the other path has one. So the last one was actually the one under us. So useful for not using a guide. Like, seriously, I don't even need a guide anymore just to even play this game. Like, I know how to play it. Played it for, like, a good long way. Also, you can just skip most of the slides by jumping here. But another major way to skip it is you come, like, a quarter way here, and then you jump off down there. That's, like, the fastest. And I hope I didn't miss any shiny objects. That would suck.
like, yeah, I'm pretty fast when it comes to spinning. Alright, so I missed nothing. But yeah, as you saw there, I'm pretty fast at spamming buttons like a maniac. Like, seriously. Like, normally you won't really see much of a button press for this game. But really, I'm going to have to button press like a thousand times just in order to get this slide done. Because this one's hard. But the next one's even harder because there's another sock, but it's guarded by a robot and he has to be in mid air to dodge a um, missile attack that he flings at you. Because guess what? It's one of those robots that flings the water missile. And guess what? You will toss it while you're in the air. So you basically have to juke that. But also, after we defeat the industrial park, I think, like, that'll be, like, it. Because then I can at least go back, get the spatula, and of course the other socks that I missed. Because there is still one more sock of those fish fields that I haven't gotten yet. If you watched my past episodes, um, it's because I don't have a couple moves. I have one of them now, but I need the other one. So basically, in total for SpongeBob, you only get three moves. But the very last move is super handy. Like, I mean, literally, it's handy. Like, you basically just launch a projectile in the air, and you'd be all set. So why am I going back to the beginning just like this? Well, I'm getting all the shiny objects. I know this is super boring, just watching the spin button, but, you know, I just want to do it. I just want to get everything. And I just realized I just died, which means I'm going to have to get all the snowmen again. What am I doing? Like, I just literally got myself killed just for nothing. Just for some stupid shiny objects. Like, I really want to show you, like, how to 100% get, like, I know, um, 100%ing is, like, collecting everything, but I want to include the shiny objects for the 100%, because mainly, I just collect everything, and I mean literally everything. Basically, I'm so dedicated to this game, and of course to other games that I am going to be recording on my channel. Um, I completely 100% those as well. So don't think, just because I 100% this game doesn't mean I know how to 100% like a good amount of other games. Because guess what, they will take a good bit too. Apparently, I couldn't collect that. Mm. Do it. For some reason, the ice, I don't know if the ice speeds you up or slows you down. But that's my main problem with this. Hurry. Also, you can last at them. Yeah, you can last the snowmen that don't have a hit detection. Like they do. But. The radius of, like, getting them, it doesn't feel, like, completely right when you hit them. So apparently, for some reason, um, the way their entire body is projected from what we see to how the lasso sees it, when Sandy ropes around it, it seems like it's much bigger than you'd expect from what you actually see. Also, props to that awesome little jump thing. Also, you can also do that little short jump right there just to get that snowman and go to this bottom half. 
Like, it doesn't seem as easy as you might think, but it's actually kind of useful to get the top and the bottom half at least clear. Alright. So, I actually kind of know how to skip um, to the other slide. But it will cost something. And of course that will mean time for this video. But it also costs um, a good amount of button mashing. Because basically, I'm going to have to button mash like a freaking pro right now just to even do this. You're possibly hearing me just mashing these buttons like crazy. And yes, I actually am mashing these buttons down. There we go, got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. That's how you do it. You can actually skip to the other side, get the other snowman, and there you go. Whew. So much for all that button mashing, but hey, at least we made a shortcut. A shortcut. Yeah. Okay. Alright. And the good thing with Sandy is that if you actually mess up a jump, but you don't have enough speed to make it to the next one, just go back by just doing what I did, spamming all the freaking buttons. Also, if you hold forward and go faster, and you hold back to slow down. Like, out of those forward even speeds you up, based on how the game's momentum values are, when you change directional buttons on your controller. Like, I, I, I don't know the speed of walking and all that. But I know one thing. Get the sock right there. Yeah, I know, kind of frustrating just watching me just do nothing but that. But sadly, that's what I'm gonna So next slide, it's of course the same deal. Just rinse and repeat, beat the robots, get the spatula, win the time trial things, and get the other spatula. <laughs> Also, for some reason, we Thunder Hill, because of the exception of not having the flying guy appear. It actually took him out. <laughs> kind of surprising. Up next is Sand Mountain. Yes, you heard right. Sand Mountain is the true challenge. So not only it's on the level itself, but it's also the area. Oh, this prestige of this aerodynamic physique. But I'll give you a golden spatula if you can beat my time. Uh, hi, hi, hi. Two twenty-one. So basically, this is about a minute ahead of Mrs. Puff's um, time on Guppy Hill, but. I was on shorter. Also to get that he had the freaking bowl to this. And apparently the bowl bowl is from behind here. So this time we don't actually have snowmen um on the side or anything else, but we have to use Sandy for one of the socks. There's an easy sock right here. Now, next part, this one may seem a bit confusing. So what happens is, when you're on these things, 
like they they bend. They basically turn from their original position to another spot. And they just hundred percent lean. So basically to the left right here, that's where that sock is. Yeah. You have to be standing for that. Alright. Prepare for some loud noise. Yeah, that was the loud noise. Also, double jump off of this, get a 50, but we missed the sock as well. So, we, even though we got the 50, we also missed the sock. So, we're actually going to come back on this slide just to get that sock as well, specifically. But also, we're going to get the rest of the shiny objects. Because, oh my god, th this slide, it just takes the cake at killing you. Like, and I'm not even joking, it really takes the cake to kill you. Basically, from the two routes that split, you get three routes. So I'm just going to get to the right this time. So we got 24 seconds to make it to the end. And we're actually close. And it seems like we will actually make it. Wow. So much for a normal path that I don't take. Also, I just almost fell off. Because of that stupid robot. And also because of how I jumped. I need to hit all these buttons quick. Alright, go, go, go. I still hear another uh, machine. I still hear that machine. Alright, we'll mind about that machine, because it doesn't work. But, we also be learning time, we also get the spatula, but we're going to need to get the socks. Um, Alright, let me see if I can... I want to see if I can talk and drive that sponge at the same time. Just to make it much better. <laughs> but now, let's switch over to stand. So we're going to go for one socks on this route that we're going to take. And then I'll take the other sock and of course the other route. Now for some reason there's a shiny object, a blue one, up around here. I don't know where the blue one is. Like, I know there's a blue shiny object if I've seen it before. can't seem to find it now. Like, and I know the general area, I was there, but I couldn't see it. Sometimes, off of camera angles and also while you're moving, it doesn't really freaking help. Let me see if this will work. No. Oh, whoa, whoa, what? There it is. There's the freaking blue shiny object. It's basically right freaking there. How can you see that? Alright. Besides wasting more time. It's been only 30 minutes or 40 minutes since he's recording. And I've already beaten like Sand Mountain. Well, almost. That's a, that's a bit crazy to think that I actually accomplished this. And apparently Sandy can grab stuff while she's in the middle air. 
give me that. Alright. Besides wasting seven minutes of your time. Let's go continue. Like I promised. This time I'll take the fast route. I, I was basically using the slower route because I usually stay with it though. But, eh, whatever. And plus, this route actually does have a shortcut as well. So that's why it goes also faster than the other one. But yeah, here's this again. We'll take the two routes that are like the most noisy. It and it was actually the one that we encountered. So since we're gonna go for this sock, um, there's no point of just hitting the button because you know, kind of dumb. And also, why was I so slow right there? Oh my God, you're so slow in this. Yeah, I guess what that robot's targeting you from over there. Okay. So I'm gonna kill him before he kills me. Okay, so no shiny object there. Alright. Okay, so I think I got all the shiny objects from here. But yeah, prepare to allow this again. Headphone users, turn down the volume. Yeah, and also you can see the little marks on the ground that indicate that it's going to be a certain jump. Like, we can see it just ahead. We don't really need much of an indication. Or better yet, take out the indication. That'll make it much better and more of a challenge. So, we're going to take um, the same path again, but this time, we're going to go to the left and then the right. Because we'll save the middle for last. Or, and abruptly, get that happen. So, I'm going to take this route. And look, we're already here. But I'll take the one on the left. I'll keep them at all for later. And this is basically what I use to get past, like, all those turns. I don't know if this is actually faster or not. Maybe it is. Like, I don't know. I'm just not really paying attention to speed at this point. But, yeah. Also, I don't know why I just keep jumping like this. So let's see. We got 9 out of 10. Let's get that last one. So let's take the same path again, but this time, let's not get hurt when we try to do the shortcut. Okay, for some reason, trying to jump again just put me in the glide mode and it killed me. Oh, such freaking inconvenience. why the people are just standing in the middle of the ski slope. But you're gonna get hit anyway, so why are you there? Alright, we're gonna get out of this loud noise. Alright, we got out of that. Easy and simple. But here's the sock that I was talking about. Almost died there. 
I almost lost a bit of balance. Yeah, for some reason, when you're in the middle of the air, you can't do your normal jump. You're basically doing the second jump. So now let's take the path to the right instead of the left. And we can see we're here. Alright. So what path are we going to take? Okay, so we're taking this path. Um, okay, so we're going to this loop. Don't know why they put that there. Not really necessary. Could have just connected with this path to make it faster. And now we're taking the middle path. And that's basically the first path that we took, which was the very right when we were doing the challenge. Also, I could have just made the skip right there. But hey, at least I did something. And now lastly, I'm going to go get the shiny objects from wherever I missed from last time. I'm guessing up. I just want to collect everything. But seriously, I don't know why I want to collect everything just for a pure 100%. Imagine that being an achievement, getting a uh, pure hundred percent. But at least it got the freaking checkpoint, so now I don't have to bore you guys with that slide again. This time I'm just gonna take the complete bottom route, ignoring the boulder button, and seeing um if there's any shiny objects on that very loud, annoying path. Seriously, that path is so loud. I'm just concentrating right now, but once again, um, prepare to turn down your volume drastically if you're using headphones, but if you're on the main computer or phone, but you still hear it so loud, turn down the volume now. Hold on a second. My brightness for some reason changed from my computer. But yeah, that's the annoying loud part. But that was basically everything. So let's go back to Bikini Bottom and let's go on top of Shady Shoals. Because we got everything we need. So now let's continue. Continue on. Alright, Industrial Park. Boss number two. Wow, that robot looks like Patrick. Uh, what? He's just as bad. This day just doesn't seem to be getting any better. SpongeBob, hurry! Squidward's in more trouble than a chili riello in a pan of grease. This one's actually a bit harder. It is actually annoying me more. Basically, my main strategy 
is trying to stay away from everything. Like, I'll just stay back here, just so, like, at least I have a good covering ground. Luckily, that was a good cycle right there. That was a good early cycle hit. Oh. Actually, one of the fastest hits I could have made on him. It's surprising to see I actually was able to hit so easily. Like, usually, I expect myself just going up to him and hitting him. But, no. Again! Wow. So, I just basically got the same RNG. And if you don't know what RNG is, it's basically a random number generated code for specific things like boss fights. And of course, the ice cream move here. This is an RNG um, specific move. Basically, on the game coding. And basically, that was three early cycles right there. Like, I feel like that was one of the easiest first phases ever for this boss. But the second and third phase is freaking hard. Yeah, actually, the third phase is hard. Because you literally have limited distance. I'm not joking. Third phase, you have such a limited distance. And plus, you have to be on the very outer, outer edge just to freaking kill this guy. Like, and I'm not joking either. It literally takes a good bit just to frickin' hit this guy. So what you want to do is when he spits up the industrialized do right there. You basically want to be at the very back middle on this thing here because he actually will start from the area we started at for the boss fight. Right. That was so stupid. It should have automatically put me back with the box. But apparently, the game hates that. You want to make him go to force him to turn that way. And don't try to be ultra fast where you can screw up the path. Because pass. basically, you're not going to have a fun time. Alright, at least this gives me a chance. Alright, good, good, good. Alright. So basically, he pulls that thing three times, and this is basically going to be the end of the boxes. Also, the end of the usage of ground. And we're going to have to rely on sniping distances just to even freaking kill him. But you'll see what I mean in a second. This boss was one of my most difficult. Yes, give me the dessert hit. Alright. Roll out some robot punishment. Now he does that move. He tries to freeze you again. So now we are completely surrounded by the goo. By the goo that was pulled from this. And now 
we're gonna have to heavily rely on these stupid freaking movie machines to hit him. And oh my god, I kinda hate that. Because he's like near the direct center. You have to literally freaking wait, or out of one a thousand chance against freaking lucky to hit him, then good freaking luck. Oh my god, it seems like in, like in the direct middle of the entire floor goo. It just makes it impossible sometimes. Alright. Okay. He's at least being easy with me this time. One more hit, and this boss is dead, and we get our new move. Yes. We get a new move from at least. Okay, I don't think I recommend hitting the Y button for this portion. You might get hit in the frickin' midair. Oh my god, this hit so tries to hit me so many times. Has he just been in the same um side like the entire thing? Yeah, this is why I hate these things. Because your bubble ball will either hit the goo, or you over bowl it and you get hurt in the goo. Even though it doesn't seem like it's taking your health away, it'll still kill you. So at least we get a spectrum. And a new godforsaken move. Thanks, Andy. We'd still be popsicles if it wasn't for her. Aw, oh, shit. These fillers are gonna make me blush. I think I have fun in my pants. Okay. Alright. I'm sorry, Plankton. The chum bucket lab is locked up tight. I don't know if I'll ever get enough golden spatulas to get in. Yes, it's the chum bucket security system. I designed it myself. It makes me so proud. It was meant to keep out the hateful throngs of the unwashed. Unfortunately, I never figured I'd be on this side of it. So what are you going to do, Plankton? We, of course, meaning you. We're going to have to go out there and get those golden spatulas. Well, I'll never get back into the chum bucket and regain control of my robots. What was that? Oh, uh, I said, will I ever get back into the chum bucket to stain all my pots? Yes. Hmm, something's busy here. Keep looking for golden spatulas, SpongeBob. I'm sure that my robots out there have some. Okay, you call them your robots? No, I... And I saw a plaque on the butt of one of the robots that said, Property of Flagman. Yeah, if you're an evil person, don't put property of your name on it. Well, maybe, but I... And I found this order form for robot parts with your signature on it. Can I have that back? I need it for my tax write-off. I think you've been pulling my leg this whole time. Well, duh! I'll bet you made all these robots. And after I get inside the chum bucket and figure out how to stop them, I'm gonna tell everyone. Fine, tell everyone. Be a big tattletale. I'm still smarter than all of you. Maybe this day won't be mine. Or the next. Or possibly even the next. Or the next. Or the next, or the next, or the next, or the next after that. But the one after the next, after the next, after the next, after that. Well, that one after that, right next to that one, that will be my day. Alright, so we unlock the third area of Bikini Bottom. whoop do you And Patrick is still back at his house. Sad, I know. But we will that, get another sock. That was so useful for this guy. Alright, so we got 54 specials. We almost have enough for the Dutchman graveyard. Looks a lot closer than you'd see it. Oh, and this guy. So, this is the movie theater. 40,000 shiny objects. Now, 
Like, I get it, movies are expensive. Maybe it costs, like, at least a good 50 bucks for, like, a ticket or two. Or possibly, actually, that's not like a plane ticket. Not, like, something you see from movies. But then, why is that so expensive? Like, is shiny objects are so valuable? What? Make us pay 40000 I get it, it's a challenge. Also, kind of dedication for the game, if you've been playing it, for this slot. Oh, Mr. Rat! You don't look so good. You gotta help me, boy! The Krusty Krabs have been overrun by a bunch of them hooks and robots here! Man, move in the out! Of course. I'm going to clear the robot cut. Get me back to the restaurant. And most importantly, grab you me money. No more fried cooking for you until the crusty crab is a robot free. So we're going to have to save the crusty crab. But also, remember last episode? Special on top of there. Gold underwear up there. Bubba Buddy, I bet right. the next move you teach me will be the best one ever. Children! And then stop on your children! 
And stop on your children's children! <laughs> this has been a Bikini Bottom News Flash! They serve food here, yes, but they don't serve love. So, yeah, Plankton Lab is me fine. So we got spatula, yay! So now all we have left is the infestation of the Krusty Krab. And since we've got um the new bubble move, we can use that to our advantage. Because I know what to do. And it's a specific um trick to do that will require you camping one spot. And this is an elevated spot. But it's not as elevated as you think. So as we can see, we already have that guy there. We have that guy there. We have two of really these sleepy time dudes. Um, and that machine. It might just spawn something. Also, they stop attacking you because they think that they actually did hit you. Surprisingly enough. Alright. Destroyed all the other robots here. But now, let's go get that last stock. Now, where's the last stock to me at? Well, destroy everything in the crust of crap. Yes, you heard me right. Destroy everything in the crust of crap that can be destroyed. It means like every little thing, like the cashier, in ketchup and mustard condiments, the tiki's, the table, well not the table, but the chairs, in the boxes. And you'll get your last sock. I know it's kind of stupid why you destroy everything just to get a sock, but hey, it's a sock. And I like that. Gone downtown bikini bottom, which we wouldn't get until like later in the game. We've already got it now. And I already collected it. Okay, I was kind of afraid to like, think, like, oh god, don't soft lock the game. And if you don't know what soft locking is, it's basically when the game freezes itself. But everything is still moving, and you can't move your character. That's basically it. Be worried there for a bit, boy. Worried for me, money, of course. Here, take this as your reward. All right. So we got that done. Let's go get this spatula. Yeah, we have to come back with a cruise bubble. But let's remember the good time we had, the good times we had with this level from episode two. Yes, you heard me right, episode two. This is episode four. We're already on. We're already on episode four, but yet this is this like area was recorded on episode two. Along with Goon Goon and uh, Poseidon. But yeah, this thing, basically, you need Spongebob and you need Sand to glide over to that door there. Like, it's kind 
kind of sad how some of us just go really fast. There's already, I can see like split from Patrick's house, just from like the little uh, down there. Kind of sad to see how some of us go through very fast. So now we're gonna go to uh yeah. We're going to go to drain the lake, the lake, and we're basically going to get to the last stop. We need to switch. switch. Uh, remember, remember we visited back this level in episode 3 just to get one sock, but now we're back here again to get the other sock. And actually, am I noticing this? Right now? Oh my god. The freaking pressure pad is not even stuck on the ground. You can just see just a little bit off the ground. You can see out the map too. Yeah, but this level was played through and recorded on episode one, surprisingly enough. This was based this episode was all basically just this level. Yes, this entire jellyfish field level was just recorded the first for the first episode. Well, like this level did take a good bit to complete. Okay, where's this guy? Okay. Kill him all. Now let me see if I can see the pressure. Alright, so when you hit that pressure pad, it shows up that. Oh yeah, from a certain angle it doesn't show it. Unless you did that. Yeah, I kind of see it. Alright, let's continue. So actually, oh, I killed two of these chickens at once. Alright. Yeah, the crucible has like a little area of effect, but it's not really efficient for them, but it is kind of handy for some situations. So we got all the socks here. We're basically done with everything except for the fourth, Flying Dutchman, Sword of Stream, Chum Bucket Lab, of course Patrick and Mr. Krasen's own missions. But yeah, this last area has only 15 socks. Shocking, I know. So, I'm going to go back to the infestation at the Crusty Crab. Uh, oh, we just spawned here our magma. But yeah, once you come back in here, people come back in, and we got a freaking mime in the window. <laughs> I can't even hit him through the window. I actually tried that. I actually tried to see what I could hit him. But no, you can't. But also remember, the beginning of the game, from like the very first few minutes of the episode, um, this chum, not the chum bucket, um, but the um, crusty crab wasn't seen for the beginning cutscene of the game. But yeah, I don't know why they did that, but we'll continue on. So we're already at like 58 spatulas. Kind of insane, don't you think? But how about we go to SpongeBob's Dream next? Because Kelp Forest, I know that's going to take a good bit along with, um, Dutchman's Graveyard. So, I'm gonna go to SpongeBob stream real quick, and we actually get a cutscene for this. And everything still moves. And this happens. Luckily, SpongeBob stream isn't that long. So, once we're finished with SpongeBob stream, I'm gonna call it a night, play Counter-Strike, and then just be on with my way. What mischief can be found in this sub-aquatic sub-ambulant realm? Yes, I play Counter-Strike now. <laughs> dream bubbles. I'm surrounded by dream bubbles. I wonder what that means. 
Jerry, what are you doing here? Ow. Oh, so I'm dreaming. Well, then first thing I'm going to do is dream myself up a mustache. How? Ow. Thanks, Jerry. It does oh. Look more productive, doesn't it? I love how they added that. <laughs> wow, more tasks? Well, I could use more golden spatulas, but where should I start? Ow, ow. You mean each dream bubble has a golden spatula in it? Ow. Uh, ready. Ow. Yes, Gary, I'll be careful. So basically, we got one golden spatula on each of the levels. We have one there. We have one up there. Now where are the other two you may ask? Well, one of them is actually on top of um, Squidward's um, house. And the very last one, I actually have no freaking clue. I have to find out. But yeah, it seems like Spongebob's dreaming about um, Krabby Patties with his friends, of course. Now here's the... Alright, I'm gonna die real quick because I actually know a little quick trick. And that is called getting hurt by being stupid to not jump the first time. So basically, you can jump off the very edge right here, double jump, and then you can double jump onto this, and this gives you a quick early cycle too. Yeah, that, that robot that we just killed, that gives us a hundred shiny objects. And he's actually the hardest robot in the game. No joke. Alright, so we got this stupid little ball to handle. And... Oh, it just made it. But yeah, that stupid ball for some reason, I feel like it has some kind of trick to it, but for some reason it doesn't anymore. So I just remember I had to do something in order, and look at that, I could have actually got an early cycle again with that. And by the way, this is speedrunner talk right here. Done. Also, there's really nothing for this slide, but I just like going down it. Oh, oh, that was close. Spice in a row. So you have to feed a thousand shiny objects to this clam just to unlock the next area to get the Squidward. And then it's the Miss Krabs and the Patrick, and that's basically it. We can already see there was a speck on top of Squidward's house. And it already unlocked this task. Super bound. Like there's no tomorrow. For some reason my camera angle always likes to turn. And sometimes the game likes to do that. Well, there goes my drink for this episode. Well, never told me cooks and cans never freaking last that long. For some reason, my drink did. So let's go to Sunday's dream. Now, we're going to start our first spatula. What? Your dream is massive. Everything he gets is big, even dreams. 
then you're just the right person to reach the spatula on top of that golden acorn. My dream, my rules. I'll get that spatula faster than a Texas jackrabbit across the four-lane highway. All right. So already we get a free purple, which is nice. I don't know why I did that, but also you get a free super ultra mega monster combo just by doing that. That's kind of crazy how you can just get a free super ultra mega monster combo just by that. We also got another slide. So apart from having so many slides, um, this game actually turned out pretty well for me. You know, it was actually fun beating this game. Boss, it actually kind of took me two hours to beat because I didn't know how to beat it the first time. Like, there's two phases to the final boss. So, first one is attacking it from the outside, and the second time it's attacking it from the inside. And attacking it from the inside took a lot longer because you don't have much health. Alright, this is where one of the unbelievable socks is. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. That's a special over there too. So I forgot that there was two in this one. Can I ever just three normal dreams of world combination? <laughs> Alright. Aside from that, let's gear up. So you're going to be surprised by one of these sock spots. And this literally took me four years after playing this game the first time to figure this stupid sock out. I'm like not even joking. It literally took four years to find it. And I had to look up a guide for it. Okay, that oil is freaking hard to dodge. Good, I just got out of that damage range. Alright, so get the spatula, and immediately I'm swung to that. Wow. Alright, so let's go see the unbelievable sock spot I was talking about. So. This sock took me four years until, well, actually, I don't think I even looked up a guide. I just found it by just, like, looking around the level. So I was like, what are the other socks? And then I noticed that there was, like, this back area here, and I'm like, is that possible? And I walked close to it, there was a sock right there, and I was like, you are kidding me. They actually placed one right here. But yes, sadly this is the truth. They put a sock right behind here. Like, it is possible to get it, but just think of how like hard it would be for a young person to even figure that out. And like I had this game for a good bit too.
So once again, spamming this button. Wait, what? There's a purple! Wait. I can't get it. There we go. So I never really 100% of the game. They literally hid a shiny object in such a hidden spot you couldn't see it. Now that's what I call a freaking flop right there. Because first of all, who's going to think that a shiny object would be there? Now that's officially seven years of freaking wandering just to get that. Yes, seven years of wondering to get that. Because I got this game back in 2008. Basically, um, back when GameCube was actually cool. But still, like, why? Why put a freaking shiny object in one of the most atrocious places to find it? Like, you would never expect that. Like, you expect nothing to be so encrypted and cryptically hidden from your vision of view. But apparently, they did. Like, you can just barely see the stupid thing good enough just to even, like, at least collect it. I feel like there might be even more stuff I might have missed because of what I just did. Like, I don't know if that was meant to be there or what, but that's not funny to tell you that. And let me just make sure the computer didn't turn off. Sometimes the computer likes to turn itself off. But yeah, I hope I did not miss anything else that was so quick like that. Because like, now I feel like ashamed that I missed a shiny object hidden from your own vision of you. Like, and it's sad to think like something like that would happen to you and not realize that years later. And this is seven years after I got in the game to get that shiny object the first time. Continue on. <sighs> that just really upsets me to see that. Wait. Wait. There could be another purple, actually. Is, uh, is there a purple behind me here? Guess not. Okay. But now I'm really checking. I'm really checking for all that. Like, it said it could be found in the most dangerous places. But how is that spot a dangerous place? Like, that's what I want to know. Like, I know there's a couple that are, like, in, like, like a good hidden spot somewhere. But it shouldn't be that hidden from everyone's eyes. Because I don't think one person has found that till now. Like, seriously.
seriously. I'm not even joking. I think I'm like the only person that has found that. Yeah, and also this slide gets a bit more narrow when you get to the top. Like, seriously, I tried. I tried turning like this, and sometimes I mess up because the slide is so thin when you get up here. I, I can already see it going thin just a bit. Okay, whoa. Apparently the game likes to do that. Please get up there. as I saw it. I thought I could have reached it again another waste of time. Like here's a good challenge. Try to keep yourself in the direct middle. While just trying to keep veering to the right. Like you're gonna love nearly falling off like I did there. Let's hope I don't get that stupid thing again. Okay, I'm gonna have to immediately swing. Because apparently, if you're trying to skip over one of the swinging, swing things, they just deny you and just say, nope, got it, swing on that or else we're not letting you continue. Now the slide's gotten so big. You're also we're at the end of it. So, there's a sock and squidward stream and Mr. Kaiser stream. But if you want to see the other paths, I will show them to you. Because, you know, usually when you win 100% of the game, you always want to get everything. And apparently, I don't think I never did. Like, just the sudden realization to find out that a shiny object, which was a purple, was hidden inside that. Like, you would never think. Like, if you played this game and you finally found out something that was there the whole time, but yet you couldn't find it until, like, years later, you'd possibly be mad like I was. Because now, I want to know if I really did truly have the percentage. Because I want to know, like, how many shiny objects you can collect from the environment alone. In total. Just in order to call yourself the 100% gamer. Because I feel like I'm not fulfilled the full potential of the freaking game for the 100% title. Well, at least now I'll consider this the 100%. Because I actually found the shiny object I wasn't supposed to see yet. Like, I actually want to know what was their intention for leaving a purple shiny object almost out of your view. Cause like, you can't really see it unless you did what I did and you looked at it. Like you looked at the specific flower just to find it. Well, good thing I had that over with.
Now, also, if you jump at the right frame as you land on the slide, you can actually do a stop jump. And what the stop jump does is it actually stops your character from moving after you jump. Which I think is kind of cool. Considering, like, that's a way to stop just in case. But you have to get it on the exact frame though. Because as you can see, as you land, your um, board actually blinks out for a frame. Or two. So you can't really tell how to jump. So I think the way you're supposed to do this is as soon as you land, you have to jump at the exact frame when your board disappears in order to at least um, do the stop jump thing. Because really, like, it seems to be a lot more easier than you expect. Because, yeah, it's a lot more easier than I'd expect than when I first thought. Apparently, I can walk on that. Yeah, we're basically just based on the back of the slide. I could, if I had the choice to just jump down to the very bottom. So, let's go leave this part of the level. And it's only been hour 37 into this recording. Good. Alright, let's go get to Bronze Mega Monster Combo. But, yeah. Kinda crazy. I'm just doing some of my mouse real quick, so be patient. Alright. Alright. So got this thing again, got this little guy again, and this time pushes that, and it gives like a specific time, and then does that, and it makes it. I don't know what like comes down or comes up when you hear that noise, but I hope it's something good, like a platform. Cutting through this game like like a cake right now. I swear this game goes by a bit faster later on. All right, so we unlock that. But I want to show you a little cool glitch. Well, not really a glitch, but it was something cool. All right, that was close, but also that was epic at the same time because I epically saved that. But what I was going to do was this. I was going to use this springboard. And, wait long enough, you're on top of freaking Sandy's Freedom. And you can infinitely bounce on this object as well. Apparently the little glass that they used is apparently a bouncing material as well. Oh, you can do this. Aw, uh, I want to see if I can bounce one more time before finishing jump off. Well, that was a cool little easter egg I wanted to show you. Not really an easter egg, but it's something cool that you can do. Also, I was still in the air when I did For heaven's sake, boy, cover your ears. Mr. Krabs, what are you doing in Squidward's dream? Hard time, boy, or at least it feels like it. Do you think you can make it across this sheet of music to the golden spatula on Squidward's big nose? Don't worry, Mr. Krabs. I'll end this challenge on a high note. Uh, good luck, boy. When you get there, try to wake him up. I'm running out of aspirin. Okay. So, now, we're doing this. So we're going to jump on these music notes on the sheet of music that Squidward played 
is song one. But the catch? You can't jump on the little music vine here. Because, guess what? Everything is stuck in midair. The music sheet thing, you face through it. Yeah, as you saw, I phased through it. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to have to jump across a series of blue and orange notes to get across. The blue notes are safe, and you can stand on them forever. The orange notes, they're sour, they're actually sour notes, and they don't actually last as long. They actually last like a couple seconds before falling to their independent duty before they respawn again. So, so we got our standard quarters and eight notes. Oh, time for an eighth note line. And now we got more eighth notes, but this time, oh, we got eighth note, quarter, eight, eight, eight. Eight quarter. Oh, eight again. Eight again. I can see like oh, I guess they're all just oh no. Now we have quarter notes. It seems like they're just mostly eighth notes until like get here. So we have a sock up here, but we're gonna have to get to that line there just to get it. But I wouldn't mind a little minor setback because you know much easy. So we got our berry sex, we got our, of course, tambourine, we got our conga drum, and we got our screen spongebob, apparently. Oh my god, he's actually green! Okay guys, here's one of the glitches of the game. You can actually get spongebob to turn green. God, is he gonna stay green? I hope he doesn't. Or else we're gonna be seeing green SpongeBob for like the rest of the level. Yeah, I don't know how to fix that. Oh, we also got a trumpet. She so got a trumpet. Oh, I think. Yeah, actually, those are the. Uh, I don't know if that's very sax or um baritone. Like, I think that might be very sax. Yeah, I think that has some very sax. So we got our standard on um, drums. Oh, I over jumped that? Are you kidding me? Oh my god, I'm back here again! I don't want to do this whole part again. I over freaking shot it again. Can I get past this part, please? Better not freaking overjump the tampering again, I swear to god. Alright. Then we gotta stay on this to get that sock. Back here again. But this time, it'll be the last time I'm back here. Um, 
what was that? Okay, I don't know if you saw that glitch there. Now, I actually want to know, what was that? So apparently I encountered a glitch with the orange note. The first orange note that I jumped on uh, was actually near the edge. I think it might have despawned under me, but for some reason it launched my character halfway across this thing, and then I fell to my death. Glitch again. Because right there was a little glitch. That was actually a new glitch I just discovered now. On camera, of course. So to all of you that just saw me randomly teleport like a freaking madman, you can blame the game. Oh my god, these long notes! How are these eighth notes? They're so far apart! Alright, so I got past that. You're telling me! We also got moving orange notes. Also, we're at the end of this. Now before I get the spectrum, let me get this. There we go. Alright. Now we can officially say goodbye to this level. Now we only need one more sock and a Three more spectrums to go. I was actually using one hand right there because I was still eating pizza. I'm actually eating the Elio's pizza. I was eating and I was like, oh crap, I better not screw up. Alright. So what this clan does, it actually gets you two obstacles that you don't actually have. And it also moves them. With words, this is amazing. Amazingly awful, you mean? Mr. Krabs is dreaming of the Krusty Krab. What a surprise. I can't escape work anywhere. <laughs> Whoa! Lunch rush! I better grab my hat and... Or get my hat! Get that spatula and get us out of here! It's like a shiny golden toothpick that holds together the bun of... We don't have time for this! Alright. So there's three different spawners. And one of the robots is actually one we haven't met yet, but we were supposed to meet in Kelp Forest. <laughs> the other one was in the Dutchman's graveyard. So... Now, we're going to have to go on a robot killing spree. Alright, so what I did for this guy... This is basically your death. I'm actually noticing that they spit out on um, rainbow. Yeah, I'm making some pretty quick kills here. So you can get rid of that spawner over there. It actually doesn't affect me. Alright, 
Now, after you destroy his shield, he kill him instantly. And that will actually allow me to destroy that, because then I'll unlock the other two. God, I hate this one. Are you? Ugh. I'm descending into the freaking madness here. Breathing, dude. I swear, I'm like quick killing these guys now because I'm so tired of dying. Alright, destroy that stupid machine. Now let's go kill the other stupid machine. attacking him. I swear to god that freaking fire move is so stupid. How I swear to god if he freaking killed me when I was that far from that thing. Can I move on with the game now? Pull that stupid thing out. There. Got the stupid spectrum. I swear, this level is the one that freaking irks me the most. And how far am I into this recording? Hour 50 freaking 5. Feels like it's even more.
Well, I'm almost done with this thing. My god, this hole is horrendous. I swear to god, I would've frickin' died hitting all those spikes. Cause nothing frickin' turned! Turn! It's like trying to frickin' play Tetris! Yeah, it's like trying to frickin' play Tetris! And you're like, on the hardest level ever! Oh my god, it should only take like two minutes to get the last two spatulas. But it feels like it's freaking ten. Because I can't freaking do this. Yeah, it took my entire freaking health. Nope. This guy killing me. Or that stupid freaking jellyfish. <sighs> now, Patrick's Rock. This is the easiest spatula ever in the game. All you gotta do is walk up. Patrick, you have a golden spatula. Give it here. Not so fast, SpongeBob. You'll have to pass my test before you get this golden spatula. Very well, sir. Challenge accepted. Very well. Your challenge is to find the golden spatula. You're holding it. You did it! Here is your reward. I challenge you to... Patrick, I... Yes? I already saw the challenge. You did? And here's your... You already gave it to me. I did? Then I challenge you to... Ah, uh, Patrick, I've got to go. Gary, uh, needs another bath. <laughs> so this will basically be the last batch of the episode. But before I go, I want to show you this. So, walk directly ahead from Patrick into nothingness. And guess what happens? You're back at the game. Yes. They infinitely moved the frickin' abyss of this place. But seriously, it's just a black room with, with a light that repeats forever and ever in every direction. <coughs> Alright, but before we get killed by this guy, I'm going to go back to Bikini Bottom, save my game, and then this will be the end of the video. Here. Let me go just get this real quick. Select this sort of stuff. Oh, and I can also unlock this level. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Scrimmage Scrimmage Club from Bikini Bottom. And, of course, my little incentive rage halfway through this. But, I'll see you guys next time where it could be, um, nearly the final part. Well, actually, this might take six or seven parts, um, depending on if I'm going to get enough shiny objects to actually unlock everything in the game. Considering this is 40,000, and I also have to get, like, Mr. Krabs, like, nearly 40,000 shiny objects. Basically, I'm going to have to use a farming spot 
and then once I get 99999, then I'll just record. But yeah, as I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This is the Shepherd Killer signing off. Peace.